John chapter uh, 12, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone, but if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Verse 25, he that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. We're going to look at 2 Peter 3 and 18. It says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Praise God. We're going to talk about living to die and dying to grow. Living to die and dying to grow. Amen. Father, we just come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You said except a seed fall to the ground and die, it abide it alone. But if it die, it brings forth much fruit. God, you said in your word that he that loves his life shall use it, lose it. And he that hated his life in this world should keep it until eternal. You also said grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. God, I thank you, Lord God, that we are living to die and dying to grow. It's in Jesus' magnificent name, Yeshua, King of kings, Lord of lords, and coming kings, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's dealing with this topic of growing. I found that the only way to truly lose your life is to stop looking in the rearview mirror. If you really want to lose your life, it's to stop looking in the rearview mirror and looking at your, your past. How I many you know that worry most of the time is in your past or worry is in your future, but you can only control your present. You can make choices are made in your present. So knowing that something is going to happen in the future or knowing something has happened in the past, it doesn't do you any good to start worrying about it. But you need to make a conscious decision that you're not going to be reacting like the world reacts and you're going to begin to respond as Jesus responded. We must come to the realization that we are new creations in Christ Jesus. Our old life is past and our new life has come. How many know that old things are passed away and behold, all things have become new? We have been talking, we have been teaching about spiritual growth, moving from infancy to maturity, learning and putting away childish things. Paul said, I want to talk to the church at Corinth five years after he had wrote the church a letter. And he said, I can't come to you and speak because you are yet still carnal. God said, it's time for us to begin to grow. You know, we use this terminology, I'm grown. I mean, y'all hear folks say that all the time. We, we, we grown. What, what does grown look like? What does grown look like for a Christian? Grown look like Jesus Christ. So I'm going to ask you again, are you grown? Grown look just like Jesus Christ. How you know? First John. Chapter three, verse two and three says, beloved, now we are the sons of God and it do not appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. And every man that has his hope in him purifieth him even as he is pure. I'm going to say it again, living to die and dying to grow. Somebody say, I want to grow. So, so I asked myself this morning, what is the goal of a Christian? What is the goal? And I use an acronym for, for goal. goal. Goal is God's original assignment lived out. Somebody say goal. You got a goal. Your goal is God's original assignment for your life lived out. The Bible says, be ye converted. The word conversion means a reversion. Peter preached the same person we're talking about. He preached, he said, repent, be ye converted, that your sins be blotted out and the time of refreshing can come from the presence of the Lord. He said, be converted. What he means was to revert back to God's original plan and purpose for your life and come again. So you can have a person, Brother Aaron said, it surprises him about himself sometimes. He said, man, whatever happened to that guy? It's because you repented and you were converted. God reverted back to God's original plan and purpose, and then you came again. So you can go into the same atmosphere, but you can have a different effect. 
Man, anybody in here having a different effect on the people on your job, the people in your family, a different effect on the people that are around you and your social circle or whatever, it should be. Because any man that be in Christ is a new creation. Old things are passed away and behold, all things have become new. We need to come to the clear, to, to the realization, man, that I'm not who I used to be anymore. And I don't even want to be who I used to be anymore. But I want to die to me. And I want to live unto God. Living to die. Dying to grow. So there's no dying, no growth. No, no dying, no growth. If, if, if you're not willing to say, I, I don't want these things in my life anymore, based on the fact that he doesn't want them in your life anymore. So now once you become a child of God, God is your father and God makes the rules. And when God makes the rules in his kingdom, he rules over and overrules. And we're supposed to be the subjects, his kingdom citizens. So we obey our father's rules. When we do that, life begins to change right in front of your face, brother Aaron. Things you used to do, they say it all the time. Things I used to do, I don't do no more. Places I used to go, I don't go anymore. That, that makes a lot of sense. Amen. So, so it's God's original assignment, live out. How do we do this? How do we grow? We grow through God's objective truth. Somebody say God's objective truth. What does objective mean? It means expressing or dealing with facts or conditions as perceived without distortion by personal feeling. That means it don't matter how you feel about what God says do. If you want to grow, just do it. That makes sense? We, we talk about we want to grow. How, how many really want to grow spiritually? Because I'm going to show you in a little bit that the, the higher you raise up, praise God, and the higher you are in the spirit, the further you proceed. And some people are still stuck at ground level. But God wants you to get to a place where you can begin to perceive and discern the things that are coming. He said the Holy Ghost will teach you all things, even things to come. So, so God is the God that was and is and is to come. So God can knows the end before the beginning. So we need to understand everything come from God, through God, and back to God. We're talking about the Alpha and the Omega. We're talking about God. Man, I'm telling you, man, when, when I get to thinking about the Lord and reading the scriptures, the more you know about God, the more you know about yourself. The know you know about God, who is your creator, because he's Elohim, means God in the beginning. God, Elohim, created the heavens and the earth. You are included. Elohim. But the more he says, let us make man in our own image. So we are made in the image of God. So the more you know about God, the more you know about yourself. So people trying to figure out and getting titles and getting labels and getting AKAs and aliasness because they asking people, who am I? We go into the local doctors and the motivational speakers and we trying to find out who am I? The only way you find out who you are is in God's book. Because the Bible is the revelation of God in written form. Yeah, the Bible is the, the revelation of God in written form. That, that's what he is to us. So, so our willingness to die to self by multiplying in knowledge and adding the faith ladder produces much fruit. You know, we'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. Praise God. So, so what do I mean? It's our willingness to die. How many ready to die? Somebody say, I want to live. Well, let me tell you something. Your, my instructions to you is you got to die. If, if you want to live, then you got to die. Jesus said, if you're going to come after me, first things first, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. The word follow means holy obedience unto Christ. So our willingness to die to self by multiplying in knowledge, so we have to multiply in knowledge and, and adding uh, the faith ladder produces much fruit. We're going to talk about those attributes or those virtues or those supplements or, or those enhancers we may use today. All of them fit. They are befitting, but there are supplements that you need to add that supplement what you already have. You supplement your faith. So we look at the book of Peter in chapter 2. In chapter 2 Peter, chapter 2, verse 1, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them who have obtained like precious faith. 
with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior. I know teaching is repetitive. We talked about this. So he's talking about all of us. He said, listen, this faith is not only for the apostles. The same faith that saved the apostles is the same faith that saved you. That's faith in Jesus Christ. Somebody said we got likewise faith, like like matter faith. We got faith that's like, just like, just like, just like the apostles. We got that faith. He said, grace. How did we get that? We got it through grace. By grace, you're saved through faith. Not of yourself is a gift of God, not by works of righteousness, least any man should boast. So if you're saved, you had nothing to do with it. It wasn't any human uh, assessment or any human uh, uh, help from yourself. Did you help yourself get saved? So now that we say we got this peace with God, somebody say, I got peace with God. Somebody say, I got access to faith. We talked about that already. So, so this, 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 this nature and this new person that we are, it started with faith in a person. And that faith in a person gives us power. Somebody say power. Where you get that from? Verse three. According as the divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Somebody say, I have all things. You already growing. You don't even know it. You sit in your seat. You already raising. I already see you raising. If you say you got all things that pertain to life and godliness, you know the good thing about watching film when you're a football player or basketball player, you begin to see how your opponent, how he do what he do. Then you begin to strategize. And as you begin to strategize, you know what they're going to do before they even do it. But the Bible says you've been given everything that pertains to life. Watch this. That's eternal life and godliness. That's God likeness. You got everything you need. So people say, man, I'm living a defeated life as a Christian. How come I'm not growing? It's not God's fault because he said you already got everything you need to succeed. Somebody say, I got it already. So having faith in the person gives you the power. Praise God. And he says, given unto all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and virtue. Now watch this. How do we Get the power. After you get the power, you need to know that you need to lay hold to the promises. Verse 4 says, whereby are given unto us exceeding and great and precious promises by these, you may be partakers of his divine nature. Do we become little gods? No, we don't become little gods. There are some things God said that will be revealed to us, and there's other things that God said won't be revealed. In De De Deuteronomy chapter 29, verses 29, the things Secret things are unto God, but the things that are revealed are unto us and our children's children. So that suggests there's something God will share with you and some things he won't. Amen. But we're talking about growing, y'all. Somebody said, I'm trying to grow. He said that by these things, you might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. If anybody made, if anybody made an exit out of the world into the kingdom of God, amen. I, I've made an exit out of the world. The Bible said he gave us an avenue for an escape. What was his avenue for an escape? Believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. And he saved you, so you made an exit out of the world that was that, 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 that is lusty after the, the, the flesh. When I looked at this text, man, I was looking at 2 Peter chapter 1. And I'll call this the math chapter. Why you call it the math chapter? There's some multiplication going on. There's some addition going on. And there's some subtraction going on. It's right in the text. It, it, somebody said the math chapter. It's simple. It's the math chapter. He says right here in 2 Peter 1 and 2. Grace and peace be what? Multiply unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Somebody say multiplication. Not only is multiplication in here, addition is in here. 2 Peter 1, 5 says, and beside all this, giving all addition, all diligence, add to your faith. Somebody say addition. Add to your faith virtue, and to your virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and brotherly kindness charity. For if, somebody say if. Word of condition, boy. That's it right there, man. That's a mean word right there. Because you're trying to figure out how come I ain't growing. I'm still a midget in the spirit. I come, I ain't growing. It seems like everybody's growing. It seems like everybody seems like they tapping into the blessings of the Lord to make rich and add no sorrow. It seems seem like everybody is getting their blessings and their prayers answered. It seems like I'm the only person that seems to be the shortest dude on the, in, in the church. And I can't access God because he said, if these things be in you, right? 
if these things be in you and abound, that means these things take precedence in your life. These things are in front. These are a priority in your life. If these things are not a priority in our life, praise God, and abound, they make that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How many can actually say that you see yourself bearing fruit in the kingdom of God? You can see by, by God's handprint on your life, you can see that there's fruit that leads to eternity in your life. What does that mean? Somebody's life has been changed and snatched out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his marvelous light because your light is shining upon men and they're seeing your good work and God in heaven is being glorified. God ain't glorified in us. God is glorified in what through us he can do. Boy, that's powerful, man. God, God is glorified in what he can do through you. Because if he's able to talk to this brother from the block, to this brother from the block, and these brothers were doing X, X amount of things in the street, now they're over here preaching the gospel for the Lord Jesus Christ, walking and talking it out. That means God has used you. God has used you. God wants to use you. God wants us to grow in the knowledge. That word knowledge is epinosis. Epinosis is the precise, direct understanding, discernment, literation of the word of God. Man, God said you can grow when you know exactly what I'm saying. But see, we, we, we learn and we grow what God is saying by doing. When you begin to walk it out, then you see the evolving begin to take place. That's when you evolve from, 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 from a carnal person who just walks into church to a person that's actually functioning in your gift and your purpose that God has called you to walk in. Amen? I said we got multiplication. I said we got addition. But we got subtraction in there too. If you look at 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 9, it says, but he that lacketh these things. Somebody say subtraction. If you lack, he's taken away now. He said he's blind. And he cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sin. Amen. Somebody say living to die. Dying to grow. We got to give up some stuff. It's some stuff. You know the stuff. Most of the stuff you know already. There's a lot of stuff that we don't know. But the stuff that you do know, start working on that. Amen. So, so when, when we look at this, at, this, at this text, we see Peter is progressive in nature, man. First thing he says, according to his divine power, he's given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding and great and precious promises that be, by these you might be partakers of his divine nature. Amen. His divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world. He says, and beside this, Giving all diligence, add to your faith. Somebody say virtue. Man, what, what is virtue? What, what is virtue? Somebody say moral excellence. Say back in the day, the Greek philosophers meant the fulfillment of a thing. Moral excellence is the fulfillment of a thing. When anything in nature fulfills its purpose, that is virtue. That's moral excellence. So I had to ask myself, praise God, even in reading, I'm the first partakers of the fruit race. Sometimes sitting in the living room, I'm getting cut up all in my forehead. I'm getting cut up all in my chest because the word cut me. I'm the first partakers of the fruit. Amen. Amen. So as I'm reading the word, praise God, I'm coming to understand that, man, am I living out my intended purpose for being on earth? Because that's what moral excellence is. So the Bible says, OK, you saved by faith. Somebody say I'm saved by faith. I'm saved by faith, not by works of righteousness. So it was all Jesus that got me saved, right? God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever to believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So, 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 so moral excellence is, is anything in nature that fulfills its purpose. You think about a land, you think about a land that produces crop. A land, a land that produces crop is excellent because it's fulfilling its purpose. You got some crop, praise God. You got some soil. You remember the Bible talks about them four soils, stony ground, wayside. Amen. He says out of those four types of soil, there was one soil that, that the seed was sown and it brought forth much fruit. That tells me right there, there's four different types of soils, meaning there's four different types of people in church. And actually, there's only 25% 
of those people that are going to actually bring forth fruit. I didn't say it. Jesus said it. You had to ask yourself, am I that soul that is producing the fruit that God intended for me to produce? Am I working according to my manufacturer's specification? Why did God call me? A person who is tall in the spirit is a person that has humbled themselves under the mighty hand of God, and God has revealed their purpose in their life, and now they're standing tall in the spirit. They may look short to the people, because folk talking about them, say he a flunky, she can still go to church, read and pray, go on to prayer visuals, go in there. She ain't nothing to the people. But in the spirit, the devil say, that's the one I got to look out for. That's the one right there. That one that is serious about his saving grace or God's saving grace upon his life. That has said, I don't care what people say. I am going to serve the Lord in spirit and in truth. That person, the devil is scared of. Most people that walk into church door, Satan ain't too worried about them. But we changing that narrative. We changing that narrative. We're going to be weapons of mass destruction in the hand of an almighty God. We're going to be the type of people, man, that say that when he, we get out of bed, he's going to say, uh-oh, that girl then got up again, that brother up again, and he's going full force to win everybody to Christ every day, talking about Jesus, talking about the Lord, talking about salvation. He got virtue. He is actually living out his God-given person. That's moral excellence, y'all. So when he said you got to have some virtue, he said you have to, he, you not, not don't polish up. You know, a lot of times we like to polish up. Our human, our human, our human quality. Yeah, no matter how good they may be, you can't shine them up good enough for the devil. I, I can't shine this outward appearance up good enough to trick the devil because the devil is always lurking around seeking whom he may devour. And he's watching me, even those areas that supposedly gray because there's no gray area in a real Christian's life. It's either hot or cold. It's either light or dark. So that person, praise God, that Satan sees that has made it a part of his life that he is going to humble himself. He's going to live and add to his faith some virtue. Somebody say some virtue. You and I can't polish up our, our, our humanness. Our humanness. Bible says no flesh show glory in his sight. Come on. Talk about that for a minute. Man, why we want to polish up the outside instead of building the inside? Well, why we want to polish up the outside? The Bible says this outer man perish day by day, but the inner man is renewed. Still talking about living to die, dying to grow. Somebody say, I want to grow. Amen. So true virtue in the Christian life, it has all to do with producing the divine qualities that make the person more like Jesus. Somebody can say, I got to start producing the divine qualities that make me look more like Christ. Man, boy, ain't that good, Tish? That's good right there. You got to start producing the divine qualities that make you look more like Christ. So you're not trying to look like Ronnie only better. No, you ain't even trying to look like Ronnie no more. You're trying to look like Christ. So if I add this moral excellence, if I add this virtue, if I add this virtue, I'm on my way. But see, I don't stop walking in faith because now I got virtue. So it's an additive. It's a supplement. So I need to supplement my faith. A lot of people take supplements because the food we eat today, a man would have to eat 10,000 calories to get the daily recommended allowance of nutrition in his life. A lady would have to eat 5,000 calories in order to get what she would get in a diet 15, 20 years ago. So supplementation is necessary. That's in the physical body. So if supplements is necessary, we need to supplement our faith. That means we need to add to, in addition to your faith, you need virtue. You might say amen. Amen, amen, amen. So, so, so faith helps us develop virtue. And virtue helps us develop knowledge, right? I told you that word epinosis. It means full knowledge or knowledge that is growing. So, so the word used here suggests practical knowledge or discernment. When I got full knowledge, I got discernment. Somebody said I have discernment. So he said we need to add some stuff. He said besides this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue. Somebody say virtue is more excellence. Somebody say knowledge is precise knowledge. Amen. 
But then we're going to deal with this word called temperance. Somebody say temperance. Man, wow. We'll stop right there. Hmm. Somebody say self-control. Let's go to Proverbs 16.32. Let me say I need some more temperance. Hey man, I need I, I need I need a little bit more self self control. Yeah, that that person there, he's he's not too tall in the spirit. He's still a midget. Hey Amen. Because he's snapping off. Hey Amen. He's losing this. He's losing it, y'all. Praise God. Proverbs sixteen thirty two say, "He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city." And you know how deep that, that scripture is? Amen. That, that, that scripture says, he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. Somebody say meek, not weak. Meek is power under control. Jesus was meek when Pilate said, you better tell me who you are unless I kill you. Jesus said, let me tell you something, bro. <laughs> you don't know who you're talking to. The power that you got, my daddy gave it to me. Now, why don't you go, you're talking about somebody that was grown. Jesus was grown in the spirit. He said, let me tell you something, partner. Now, let me tell you something. The, the, the power that you got, my daddy gave it to you. Now, if my daddy gave you power, think how much power I got. I got all power. I don't want to blow your mind, but me and my daddy is one. I don't want to blow your mind, pal. I'm just telling you, though, but look, bro. The power that you got, my daddy gave you, and he gave you the power to do what you're getting ready to do to me. Man, oh, man. Boy, boy, boy. Man, God, people are asking, why do good, bad things happen to good people? Well, Jesus said there's no one good. So the question is, why do bad things happen to bad people? Right? Why do bad things happen to bad people? Because Jesus said there's no one good but the Father. We ask ourselves all the time, why do other stuff happen to me? I'm doing so good. Jeremiah said, the heart of man, we say, oh, God know my heart. The Bible says, God says, the heart of man is deceitfully wicked above all things. Yeah, he do know our heart. He do know our heart. But, 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 but with meekness, meekness is where I was at. Meekness is power under control. I could tell you. I could slap you. I could run you. I could do whatever. But no, no. For this very reason, am I placed in the position that I'm placed in? Where you are at, the trials and tribulations that you're going in, you're living to die, you're dying to grow. I have to die to the situation and let Jesus rise up in me and take on the circumstance head on. I told you before, faith or fear is allowing your circumstance to come between you and your God. But faith is allowing your God to come between you and your circumstance. Somebody say, I'm walking in faith. I'm walking in faith. Praise God. Proverbs 25 and 28 say, he that has no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without wall. There's another proverb that says say that, that, that uh, a wounded spirit who can bear. A wounded spirit who can bear. Amen. The spirit of a man shall bear his infirmities, but a wounded spirit who can bear. So the spirit of a man will bear his infirmities, no matter how many infirmities you have, if you have the spirit in you, it will overrule your infirmity. The spirit of a man will carry his infirmities, but a wounded spirit is shot up and holes are flowing out, life coming out of you. Amen. Talking to us, y'all. He that, he that has no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and it don't even have walls. Man, you don't have any walls. Mm. This patience, though, this selfless control, this, this self control, because he says right here, he says that hey, given all dealing, add to your faith, virtue, to your virtues, knowledge, to your knowledge, temperance, and to your temperance, patience. Somebody said patience. Here we go. So, so that temperance, y'all, we got to learn how to rule your own spirit. Yeah, you got to learn how to, how, to, how to have rule over his own spirit. It's, it's like a city that is broken down. Now, watch this. Do you control your own spirit or does God control your spirit? God control your spirit. We're mere robots in the hand of God. We're mere puppets. We wake up every morning. You're a puppet. Think about this every morning. You are a puppet, and a hand has to go in that puppet. If God's hand is in that puppet, you're going to have a successful spiritual day. 
if Satan hand, if you let Satan by your mind, your will, and your moisture get in your puppet, then your day gonna be jacked up. A lot of times you wonder why I'm doing this because you, by your own volition, have said, Satan, I'll let you ride today. We're talking about growing, though. We're talking about being that light, man, that, that, that shines in a dark place so that Jesus Christ could be seen. We're talking about God taking somebody and totally transforming you from a drunken stupor, amen, like myself, from a druggie, from a sex, whatever, and all that, and turning you into somebody that can be used and meet for the master's use. I'm talking about everybody in this place growing. God wants us to grow. He's saying right now, I'm telling you, it's time to take your faith and to make a step of faith into virtue. Time to start living in moral excellence. Live according to the potential you have. You have 100% potential to tread upon scorpions and serpents. And nothing shall be able to hurt you, what Jesus told the disciples when they came back, saying even the devils are subject unto your name. He said, man, y'all tripping. I seen Satan when he got kicked out of heaven. He was up here thinking that he could rule my daddy's throne, and my daddy kicked him out. He said, I seen him. He came down. He said, I beheld him fall as lightning. Lightning is real bright, y'all. Lightning is real fast, y'all. And lightning say, boom. So that's how I seen that joker get kicked out of heaven. I seen he went out of there fast. I seen it was real bright, and I seen him bust that dirt wide open. That's what our father is able to do to anybody that think he can rule and overrule our God. Our God reigns supreme. He's Elohim. He's king of king. He's lord of lord. There's nothing that can come that God can't handle. We got to grow in our faith, though. We got to grow in our faith. We got to get to the place where we begin to grow in our faith, y'all. How do you grow in your faith? You go from one transition. It propels you into something else. It propels you into the virtue. Praise God. It propels you and it pushes you forward. Amen. Patience ain't something that you develop overnight, though. <laughs> oh, man, this some joke is impatient. Like, Ron G, my mom said, boy, you're just so impatient. You always got to do something too early. And I thought she knew what she's talking about. Until I kept doing stuff too early. Instead of ending up on the, on the downside. The generation loud, every youth. 25 and under, oh, they got this thing figured out already. Until they find out they don't. Hey, Amen, but help them, though. Be there beside them. Walk alongside them. But don't start talking about we did it. We're going to let them do it. No, you was a fool. You're going to let them be a fool. We better say something to our children before they walk through and don't make out what we made out of. Until they don't make it out, I'll get tired of hearing that. Yeah, we, you know, I, we did it. You did it in a different time. There's more guns out here. Hey, there's more ammo out here. There's more diseases out here. Come on, somebody. Yeah, we did do it. Well, that's a good revelation there, boy. There's more chances for you to get, get annihilated now. Let's look, at, let's look at James chapter 1 real quick. I'm all done. James chapter 1. Praise God. We're getting something out of here. Verse 2. My brother, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, knowing that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Somebody say patience. But let patience have a perfect work, that she may perfect and entire want nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God, who giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given to him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering, for he that wavers is like the waves of the sea with the wind tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything from the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable. In a few of his ways, in a couple of his ways, an unstable man, praise God, a, a, a double minded man, a man who can't make his mind up, is unstable in all of his ways. Hmm. We have to learn, I summed it up like this we have to, by faith, somebody say, by faith. Let our trials work for us and not against us. But let faith have its perfect, well, let patience have its perfect work. Let your trial work for you, not against you. Huh? Why, God? No, not why, God. What for? Why am I going through this at this time in my life? I want to grow. 
What is this for? Show me where I went wrong. Search my heart, oh Lord. And when you find what made me make that move premature, didn't have any church, church any virtue, wasn't operating any excellence. I wasn't listening to epinosis. I didn't get the knowledge from the Lord. So I jumped out, show me God what was wrong. I need to find out why I keep staying short. How come I can't grow? Amen. Amen. So this is some steps I made, y'all. I want to see y'all. I want y'all see my steps. Move that brother shake. We, we, we got some steps going here. Praise God. And man, I, I was thinking about something. I, I wanted y'all to be able to see it. That all of us in here, how many saved in here? You got faith. Somebody said we got faith. Somebody said we ground level. We ground level. We got faith. Well, he says, whereby are given unto us exceeding and great and precious promises that by these we may be partakers of his divine nature. And because of that, because God has did this stuff for us, he says, give all diligence. He said, add to your faith. Somebody say, I got to add. I call this my faith ladder right here. I, I call this, this, this my faith, faith ladder. But he said, I got to add to my faith. I got to add a little virtue. Somebody say virtue. virtue. That virtue is moral excellence we already talked about it fulfilling the purpose in which we were called now you're starting to move up off the ground a little bit but he said when you add on to your virtue you got to add on to your virtue knowledge so that's epignosis so out of faith by faith i'm reading god's word taking it at face value i'm now operating in moral excellence, praise God. I'm living a life above sin. Now I'm saying no to things that I couldn't say no to, still by faith. Now faith, I don't lose the faith. Faith just propels me into the virtue. Virtue propels me into the knowledge, the epignosis, the direct, precise will of God for my life. So now I'm beginning to move up in the spirit. The people can't see it because the people just normal and they still right here on ground level. They're not worried about nothing. He come to church, he prays, he prays his hand. They don't know at home you have tapped into God's precise knowledge. Somebody said, I got God's knowledge now. So now you got knowledge. Now, now you move up. Now you got temperance going on. Now, now you got self-control, y'all. You got, you got a little self-control in times where you would just snap and go off. You got a little self-control. Now you're able to control your whole spirit. So you, you, you're better than a man that can take a whole city. Now, now you move from that temper. Now, now you done make some patience with it. You got some patience. Wait a minute. This dude is going up in the spirit. Man can't see it, but Satan sees it. He's seen that you made the proper steps. You took the faith ladder and you rode with it. You rode all the way from just simple faith, childlike faith, just believing and trusting God all the way to virtue, moral excellence. Now you're operating according to your manufacturer specification. Then you get some temperance on you. Now you got a little self-control. I'm talking about, can you visualize this for yourself? Because if you can't visualize this for yourself, this exercise does nothing for you. But when I thought about it yesterday and put it in my mind when we was in here cleaning up this garage, I was like, man, what I thought about it earlier this week, I said, wait a minute, man, I'm starting to grow. Just on the teaching from Mother Shay last week, the teachings we've been doing about living and growing, the, by the Sunday schools that we've been having, talking about truly God is good to Israel. But as for me, I almost slipped and fell when I seen the success of the wicked. That's growth right there. He, he said, man, I'm ready to give up. God is good to Israel. But when I see people of the world seem like they're doing better than me, I'm ready to give up. Then the psalmist goes on to say, then I walked into the house of the Lord. And I seen all them folks that's out there laughing at me for going to church when they washing their cars and going to the beach. Boys, God, I seen their fate. Yeah, if that fish would ever knew he took the bait. When he took the bait, he ended up fried up on the plate. He wouldn't have took the bait. No, that fish would have never took the bait if he knew his final destination was fried up on the plate. He, he wouldn't have took it, right? So now, somebody said, now I got temperance. Somebody said, now I got patience. Now, now I got patience, y'all. I, I got a little patience. I'm letting patience work my trial work for me and not against me. Amen. Amen. I'm letting my patience work for me. Now, now I got a little godliness. Somebody say God-likeness. Godliness is God-likeness. Now I'm beginning to be partakers of his divine nature. Now I'm doing some things that I couldn't do when I just had mere faith. 
Be because it's a process. Somebody say a process of development. Now I'm developing into the person who God has called me to be. A caterpillar, talk to him nine months before he become one. He tell you he had to go through a metamorphosis. He tell you he got to be sleep, man. But now, man, we, we got this thing. We got to figure it out. We didn't move from faith. We didn't move from faith to virtue, virtue to temperance, temperance, patience, patience or knowledge. And knowledge, we moved to temperance. And then now we got patience. Now we got godliness. Now, now we got godliness. We're beginning to look like. And then we move on from godliness to brotherly kindness. Now, brotherly kindness is a word Philadelphia. It's brotherly kindness. Somebody said I move from virtue. Come on, come on, somebody say state virtue. Say, say, say faith to virtue. Virtue to knowledge. Knowledge to temperance. Temperance to patience. Patience to godliness. Godliness to brotherly kindness. So now I'm operating in brotherly kindness. Now check this out. God says that he made us sit together in heavenly places. If we can't get together down here, how we think we're going to get together up there? But the Bible said he made us. Now watch this powerful revelation to find out who your brothers and sisters are. I'm telling you, powerful revelation. He says, I made you to sit together in heavenly place. So if God made you to sit together in heavenly place, he know you're going to act right when you're sitting where you sit. So if somebody ain't acting right where they're sitting, then they probably ain't sitting. Y'all get that when you get home. I just got that. Praise God. <laughs> so now, brotherly kindness. So brotherly kindness we love our brothers because we have something in common. Different. Philadelphia and his next love is different because he couples all this thing. Now imagine now, I'm on these steps and I've already moved up six steps, but I want you to understand something. All six steps start with faith. It starts with faith and faith propels me into the virtue. Virtue into the knowledge, knowledge into the temperance, temperance into the patience, patience to the godliness. Praise God. But godliness into the brotherly kindness so i'm loving my brother with the love of philadelphia brotherly love i love you because we have something in common but then this last step praise god when we step here we in charity we we, we in charity now y'all now now we loving folks that don't love us now we loving folks that's been ostracized and alienated now now we are now we loving folks like christ loved the church now, now we're loving people just like God. Now we're, we're not hypocritical in nature and we're not judging and condemning people. See, now we didn't grew right here. Now, Satan, no, I can't do nothing because he's been built on the foundation of everything Jesus possesses. Everything Jesus is allows you to now have charity and that's agape love, to love people that can't nobody love. Now you are a person that ain't even worried about what's going on down there. And watch this. You didn't bring yourself up here. By you obeying God's word, God brought you up here. And if God bring you up here, can't nobody bring you down. But if man lift you up, then man can cut off down what he put up, a proctor underneath you, a pulpit underneath you. But if God lifts you, you are lifted. If God lifts you, you're lifted. But then he says, watch this, watch this. No, I'm tempted, tempted, praise, and patience, God, and God in his brotherly kindness, and brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you, you shall abound, that they make that you shall neither be barren or unfruitful. I, I got some fruit up here. I, I, somebody says the fruit is up here. But I'm going to tell you something, man. Watch this. There's not a lot of vegetation on the top of a mountain. Reason being, you're not meant to stay there a long time. You got to go back to the valley. You, you, you go back to the valley. See, people get messed up when they're on top and win two or three rings, and then they can't ring, win rings no more. You hear about them doing drugs and everything else. But God let us know that there are going to be mountains and there's going to be valleys in our life. So while you up here, and while God is dealing with you in an elevated state, you do everything you can to enhance eternity and the kingdom of God. He said, for if these things shall be in you, you shall abound and make that you shall be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will not be barren. That word barren means sterile, sterile. You will not be barren and unfruitful. How many want to bear some fruit in the Lord? It's time, y'all. We live in a die, and we dying to grow. Brother Shea, you down here. Brother Shea's over here. So if Brother Shea 
is just operating in faith. He operating in faith. I, I asked Brother Shay, what you see down there, Brother Shay? You in church, man, among many Christians. What you see? Man, see, uh, I'm going to Bible study. Uh, Bible study. Going to discipleship class. Uh, discipleship class. And, uh, okay. Doing some things. I'm reading my Bible. Reading your Bible. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing everything that seemingly I'm, I'm supposed to do. Amen. Yeah. Hey man, so 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 I might I might turn up a little bit though, you know. Turn up a little you know, bit. I, oh, you you yeah. got faith though. Yeah, I still got I, I got faith. Yeah, yeah. Well, you yeah. still you still hitting Bible study. Yeah, that's good. Still Praise God. Yeah. Still, still doing a little Sunday school. Yeah, Sunday school. Yeah. Yeah. What else you doing? Man, just party a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. You got a little bit. Okay. All right. So you, you 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 know what I see, man? I see, man. I see your daughter and your son coming in. Man, I see, I, I see, man, he, signs and miracles, man. Man, I, I got vision for the whole city, bro. I can't see that. You can't see it? I can't see you that. You got faith, though. Yeah. Man, I, I, I can see, man, I can see Jesus even coming back. Wow. His eternal glory, I can see him taking us wow. up out of here, man. I, I can see the rapture. Man, I can see signs and wonders, man, being rocked out of my own, own head. I, Man, I think it, I think it's a little bit better up here. I think I can see a little further up here. How 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 is it that you can you can see those things? And I I got faith, but I, I seemingly I I just see these small things. Well, man, look look, man, levels. take take that first step right there. Take take that step right there. That's a step of virtue, man. You've been called by God. Man, you you've you been man. called you you've been called by God physically. You've been called by God, man. Now it's time for you to get more into the Word. And begin to deal in step, step. Take one more step for me, man. Now take one more. Just, just yeah. Just take one more. Now, now you you operating in a little knowledge. Now, man, man. Now you operating in, in, in a little patience, man. Man, now now you operate. Come on up, man. You go. You need some temperance, man. You just a ladder, a little shaky, little shaky, man. Just just keep on coming, man. Just just keep on coming, bro. Now now you operating in a little temperance, man. Now a little temperance, man. Come on up a little bit higher, bro. Need, need a little help. Come on, man. Help. Yeah, come on, bro. I'm here, man. I, I got this brotherly kindness, man. I want to get you up here, man. You're the patience, man. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, man, brotherly kindness, man. Tell me to come on, man, because we got something yeah. in common, bro. Yeah. We got something in common. Can you yeah. see further? Uh, yeah, what yeah. can you see, man? You starting to see some things happening? Yeah, I see my, my, my daughter. I see her being married and, 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 and serving the Lord. And serving the Lord, man. You be able to yeah. see that now? I, man, I, man, that's I, powerful, I, man. I see people being healed. You see people being healed? I see people growing. Wow. I, I see me uh, discipling people. Oh, man. Praise God. You discipling people? Oh, man, come on up, man. Praise God. Come on up, man. I'm telling you, you might outgrow the building, bro. Man, we praise God for this, man. Man, now, now what's going on now? What, what's going on now? Now you got this charity. This charity is a powerful thing, man. The charity is the agape love, man. What about all them dudes you was hating on in the streets didn't like you, man? You love them all, man. Now you loving folks you couldn't love before? Oh, man. Well, man, praise God. I love them. I love them. You just love them flat out. Amen. Like Christ loved you. Come on, give God a praise, everybody. Come on, give God a praise, everybody. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God. Amen. We thank God. Praise God. Come on, give God a praise. We thank God. He's a powerful and he's an awesome God. Amen. Amen. We got to step into that faith and add that virtue into that faith, into that, to that virtue, some knowledge. Praise God. Some temperance, some temperance, patience, some patience, godliness, kindness, brotherly kindness, and praise God, brotherly kindness to charity. Boy, God, just remember that because I forgot it all. Amen. Come on, give God a praise. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. Lift your hand to the Lord. God, we thank you. Stay living to die. Dying to grow. Living to die. Dying to grow. Come on, give God another hand clap of praise.